So first off, I'm gonna assume if you're watching this video, you already know what a lock miter bit is. You have two very different bit setups here. This is a freeborn lock miter setup for a shaper, and this is your typical lock miter bit that you would use on a router table. For a router table, this is actually a very large bit. It, uh, it takes a pretty good sized router. I think mine's a three or three and a half horsepower Porter cable router, and this, this pushes it. But you can see the massive difference on a bit like this uh, for a shaper. It's just a completely different ball game. And uh, I'll, let's take a look at the two different machines that run these and how they work. So you can see right here, this is one of the first pieces of shop equipment I ever purchased. This is a router table that I tricked out with the anchor fence and all that stuff. It's got a nice uh, Porter cable router on the bottom there with the lift and all that. And that's what you would use to run a bit like this. This on the other hand is a five horsepower Powermatic shaper with a one po horsepower four wheel power feeder. And that's what it takes to run a bit like this. And I'll explain to you why you need something like this whenever you get into large beam work. With these two bits here, there's actually, even though they're both lock miters, they're way different processes on getting the lock miter. The biggest downfall of a typical lock miter bit like this is number one, the setup. This is an infinity lock miter bit and it actually comes with a little magnetic jig that goes on there to help with setup. It works pretty good, still kind of a pain to get set up. Uh, the other issue is, like I said before, th this is a really big bit for a router table. It throws some serious uh, wood chips and it's actually pretty violent and pretty dangerous to be running your hands alongside. Completely different ball game <clears throat> than using a power feeder on something like this. But for small things, this will work. For, for large things like beams and things like that, it's extremely unrealistic to use a table like this. And the biggest reason for that is, whenever you use a lock miter bit, you're gonna be running it flat on one pass, and then for the other side, you're gonna be running the board vertically. Flat isn't too bad if you can keep good pressure, but whenever you go to do your vertical pass on a really large board, that means after it's passed through the router bit, you're going to have an extremely sharp edge on here. That's going to be very fragile as it's coming off the back of the table. And the other issue is, is your board perfectly straight? And uh, does it have cupping and twisting issues? If there's any kind of cupping and twisting issues, it's going to be a disaster to try to use a small router bit like this on large beams and that's where this bit absolutely uh, changes the game completely and I'll show you how that works now. So this is a freeborn lock miter bit for a shaper and it's a it's a kind of a one-of-a-kind router bit shaper bit that is because everything is actually ran through uh, at the flat orientation. With this lock miter bit you do not run anything through uh, vertically, you might ask, well, how's that possible? And it's possible because you actually have two different operations. The first operation is everything gets ran through the shaper uh, on the flat, but then on your other side, you're gonna take some of your boards for the opposing adjacent side, and you're gonna run them through the, the table saw with a dado stack with a quarter inch dado on it, and that's your second operation. And that might sound like a pain, but it solves the problem on really large boards of running them through vertically, which is re really unrealistic with, uh, with a 16 foot long board, you know, maybe a one by 12, 16 or something like that. But it's a piece of cake if you're doing it flat. So I'm gonna, I've got a big job here to do, so I'm gonna show you what it actually looks like to use this machine in a production application. So let's talk a little bit about what makes the Freeborn bit unique. You can see here, this is a lock mitered box that I happen to have uh, laying around the shop. You'll see on this top piece, there's a dado right here. It actually doesn't come off the shaper with that dado. Every piece comes off the shaper looking like this right here. But then 
you run it through your table saw on the flat uh, with a quarter inch dado blade and what happens is you create this dado right here. So this piece ends up just falling by the wayside here. It's kind of just a scrap. And then you put a dado right here and that's what you end up with. So half of your pieces you're not going to do anything with. You're going to leave them just as they come off the shaper and the other half you're going to run through the table saw and it's going to give you that dado groove that you need. So that may seem like a lot, but uh, I do high-end homes for a living and the advantage with this is ease of assembly and most importantly, no exposed fasteners. So with this lock miter, I'm able to assemble my beam super fast uh, and accurately and then just glue them and um, then there's no exposed fasteners, uh, which creates a really great end product. All right, so I'm gonna roll this thing back over there where it just collects sawdust, and um, I'm gonna fire this guy up, and I'll show you what a typical process looks like for me whenever I'm doing a bunch of uh, beams with lock miter. So here's all the material I'm gonna be running through. Uh, to make these barn beams and that is where I move my shaper to. Having the built-in casters on the Powermatic shaper is absolutely awesome. With a small shop uh, I've got 36 feet of width and I have to move this thing uh, where I can get a really nice long lane to run these long boards through. It works great. A couple notes on uh, customizing this setup. I've got my bit chucked up in here. This is a, a shield that I custom made uh, for this bit in particular uh, just to help with a little bit less uh, debris being thrown everywhere. This right here, uh, I put a wood auxiliary fence on and I'll show you in a little bit why this is important. It's got a catch the milled side, the tongue on the milled side as it passes through. So that's what this is for. One other random tidbit that I love about this bit also is that the face side of the material is ran down on the bottom side. That's completely opposite of most lock miter bits. Most lock miter bits, as you run it through on the flat, your face side is on top. With this bit, everything registers off of the uh, base of the machine right here. So before getting carried away with running, uh, my, I've got just enough beam material typically. It's nice just to run a couple pieces of scrap through the machine just to make sure everything is set right with the power feeder and whatnot. That way if I screw up a board, I'm just screwing up a scrap and not a 16 foot long board. Okay, so I've ran a couple test pieces through. I was looking to make sure that the power feeder was set right and that it was keeping everything pulled tight to the fence going in and going out with good pressure. Everything looks pretty good, so I'm gonna start running my longer boards now.